The YAS82Z is my favorite saxophone. That's just it. I, I don't really have anything else to say, so let's get to it. Check it out. Howdy, everybody. My name is Andrew King. We are here at Alamo Music in beautiful downtown San Antonio. Don't forget to visit us at alamomusic.com, where I have this saxophone and so many more available. But never forget, giving us a call always gets you the good deal. Today, we are going to be looking at the YAS82Z, my personal favorite alto saxophones for so many reasons. And the biggest one is just, it just plays great. I mean, Yamaha is known for consistency, and that's always going to be the thing, right? Quality control, intonation, all across the board, no matter which one you open, you know that the Yamaha is going to be good. And that's why they're as big as they are today especially on the saxophones. I mean, no matter which one you go with on the custom line, the 875EX or the 82Z, you're going to be getting a fantastic instrument. Now, the only thing is though, is that you kind of want to get the one that's going to be right for you, right? This is a lot of money. The, the YAS875EX goes for like $5,000. And if you go into the 82Z, that's even a bump up even more by around like $5,300 by today. So it really does depend on what kind of money you want to invest into a saxophone in the first place. But we'll get into that. So the big thing about this saxophone is that it's very much a specialized horn. The 875EX, in my opinion, and we've done a video on it before, really has to do with the kind of dark tone that you want from a horn when you're playing on a classical end, or at least as a blending instrument, right? The kind of the tone you want is going to be able to not play over an ensemble. You want to be able to play, you know, next with the French horns, or you want to be able to play well within an ensemble, especially a saxophone ensemble. But that's not what everyone's going to be doing. And the saxophone is definitely going to be the more popular instrument if you're going to want to get into more jazz areas. I'm talking your hip hop, funk, rock, all that kind of stuff where you're going to be playing over an ensemble, soloing, and you want to have that powerful tone and you need an instrument that's going to support it. Now, the person is going to be like 85% of the sound. You need proper airflow. You need to have good hand control. You need to be able to push the instrument to a certain limit. And you need to have good tone. In my opinion, I think the 82Z is kind of the best instrument for that, especially for ones that are kind of more readily available on the market as far as going online, getting one, and not having to wait eight to 10 months for the instrument to be available. The 82Z is fantastic in the point where I think that intonation, playability, airflow, and all those things combined, as well as a little special thing as far as the ability to push the instrument and having such good, the taper of the instrument is so f just perfect. I think it all combines into an instrument where all these little details all complement each other while th rather than holding it back, making it a great specialist instrument if you're gonna be going into jazz at all. Um, now, that being said, the price point is high. So w when it comes to these kind of instruments, it's not gonna be readily accessible to everyone. Make sure that you're well within your e means, and I would say look for a special. There's fantastic specials as far as financing goes across the board for these. I totally recommend looking into those 0% entrance specials from Synchrony every once in a while. Yamaha has their own program. And you'd be able to take that in be the instrument on a more easily accessible way, right? But as far as this kind of instrument, I do recommend this for any kind of professional player that wants to have kind of their forever horn, the one they can take to any gig. Um, I think longevity wise, this is also a fantastic instrument. I am well aware of many San Antonio players here, also Austin saxophone players, just Texas players in general that use this instrument, not just on the alto saxophone line, but also on the tenor saxophone line. And they all basically just sing its graces. Um, it's a very fantastic instrument as far as that goes. Also, it's very repairable as well. So even if the worst could happen to the instrument, I think this is also something where no matter which direction you would want to think about the investment, whether it's time, money, uh, all that kind of thing, this is a good instrument on that front. Now, talking about the instrument itself, I think it, it's just for what I like out of a saxophone, it does everything I want it to and a little bit more. Uh, the ergonomics are fantastic. It fits my hands very well. The pearls going up and down feel very soft and easy. They're the shaping and everything else well. Just it doesn't, it's not too sharp or anything. And so it really just feels nice going up and down. I also really enjoy the placing of the E flat and the low C key. I think they're fantastic as well as the out of the box resistance that they give. 
Um, the B, the G sharp table in particular is pretty much perfect for what I like. It's not too high, it's not too low, it, it just fits really well. The palm keys also fit very well. I enjoy those as well as the side B flat and the C key. Um, it just plays and fits to what I like extremely well. I'm used to, what I use normally is going to be the YAS61. I put on a little extender on the octave key mech to be able to put on a V1 neck, which is also a fantastic point on this instrument as well. It, um, and coming from that instrument to this instrument, it just plays great. The action on it is fantastic. It's very quick, responsive. You can do pretty much any kind of speed you want to do, and the instrument's not going to get in your way whatsoever. Uh, it's one of those instruments that really teaches you proper practice in that fact, because it's not really going to be the instrument's fault, unless you know there's like leaks and whatnot, right? Um, the other cool thing about the instrument too is the neck, like what I was talking about before. The V1 neck, the custom neck, is the perfect, uh, like you don't really have to worry about getting that aftermarket neck after buying the saxophone in my opinion. I'm not really big on getting like the different material necks, I don't think that makes too much of a difference after we're doing so many different kind of reviews on these things. But the neck that comes with the custom Yamahas, even the 875EX, the bore on it is so large and everything that the, the airflow, you just blow into it and it just responds. It speaks so well. And I think the 82Z just has a little bit of an edge on the 875EX in that fact. It just, the playability, there's no stuffiness whatsoever. It actually boosts that low end in my opinion, which makes it really good. Because uh, a lot of great modern saxophones have beautiful high ends, but where it, the, some of them can suffer sometimes um, is on that low end just because of the kind of resistant playing that you would have to do on those more French saxophones. But with this one, I think it's just great. Like it just the free blowing nature of it lets you have a really powerful low end. No matter what, if you're doing subtone or hard tone, if on the bottom end, it just comes out great. Uh, when you're playing up high, the because of the V1 neck, it's just easy. It's like butter. And it can be something that you can rely on um, as far as playing and uh, develop. You could develop, like, if you're like a college player and you have this kind of instrument where it's so easy to do and you switch to another one, you'll be kind of left out a little bit um, only because you're not used to that fact. But if you're using this, horn for this, horn, this kind of horn for the rest of your life, I mean, this is, you're going to be taken care of by this instrument. It promotes great playing. It plays great across the board. It does everything you want it to do. But of course, you are paying like $5,300. So that's also a big part of it. So anyways, so let's go ahead and check out the instrument. Let me know how you think it sounds and everything, and I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. 
What did you think? I really enjoyed the saxophone playing it up and down. I was able to play this one and the 82ZA, which is in its amber finish, which I highly recommend checking out. It's the newest one from the Yamaha line. That one played great too, like just both of these instruments. I think the 82Z line is my personal favorite saxophone line. Um, definitely not on the price point level. I think that if you're like a college player going into it, the 62 does basically everything you want it to do. This one just gives you that extra push and becomes a very good specialized instrument. Now, it doesn't mean to say that this instrument's bad for any other kind of playing. It's just that if you're going to be becoming a professional saxophone player, you do want professional specialized tools for the job that you're going to be doing. And so if you're willing to spend that kind of money on the investment in your career and whatnot, this is that kind of instrument for you. I totally recommend it. Um, I think as far as playing across the line, when it compares to instruments like the Supreme or the Yagasawa, it holds its own. It plays very well. It is a little more extra on it just because of the Yamaha brand name. But I, in that fact, this is the kind of instrument where you don't really need to go from store to store to store to try out a bunch of different ones to make sure you get the right one. I think the 82Z, the, we got a bunch of them in the store right now. Playing across the line with my tech, we were able to basically say this instrument just plays great across the board. It's a very consistent instrument, so it's a very safe investment, even if you're buying it online. I think that you are making the right choice no matter what you do. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoy playing these. Leave a like at the uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Please, definitely get in the comments. I want to hear what your saxophone is. Uh, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite song to play? I want to I want to hear about that. That's been kind of something I've been getting into to kind of keep myself motivated. Well, hey, thanks so much, and have a wonderful day.